those are all my ham, ham, first I say ham brag, now I say ham brag, ham, go to bed, go to bed Melody, go to bed. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is actually going to be a collab video with the wonderful Isabel's Style. Now, Isabel and I have developed a friendship over the past uh, couple of months now. She has fallen in love with um, Hermes craftsmanship and I've probably been an, an enabler for her. So we have really bonded lately and we've developed a really great friendship. And that's what I really love about social media and YouTube is actually making new friends. I love when you guys who watch my videos reach out to me and ask me questions. I'm always happy to help. I'm always down for a chat. So if you want someone to chat to, please feel free to contact me. On Instagram is usually preferable. That's where I'm the most active. But I do also have a Facebook page called Person Fleek, so you can also message me there. So yes, this is a collab video with her. So if you aren't already subscribed, I will put a link down below to her channel and definitely head over there and check out her videos. Now, I am going to tag a few other people in the description bar down below. Um, to continue on this video however it is open for anyone to do if you want to jump on board and do this so this video is all about handbag deal breakers so what are those points those things that you go not nah, can't have it won't have it in a handbag and eh, no next thank you next uh, first and foremost if you love luxury videos and you aren't already subscribed to my channel I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos I upload on a Wednesday and on a weekend okay I've got a list here of um, deal breakers the things that I have thought had to think really long and hard about because it's not until you actually start to think about it do you realize that oh okay yeah this is something I actually don't look for in a handbag or I I don't want my handbag to have but just bear in mind, just take this with a grain of salt because these, these things can change. Our um, preferences, our style can change over time. It's a case of each to their own. So just don't be offended by anything that I say is like, no, nah, I won't have it in a handbag, but you absolutely love it because we are all different. The world would be a very, very boring place if we were all the same. That's the fact of it. So let's all appreciate that we are all different with different points of view. So let's start off with my first point. They're in no particular order. This is just going to be a heap of things that I consider like that are deal breakers when it comes to buying a luxury handbag. And the first one is suede jersey velvet for new bags. I will not buy a brand new luxury handbag if it's made of suede jersey or velvet and I think that this comes without saying is that these fabrics are more delicate they cannot be refurbished so easily if jersey wears down and thins down like corner wear how are you going to replace that there's no um, edge glazing for jersey <laughs> it doesn't work that way it's not like leather where you can fill it in with edge glazing jersey is doesn't work like that. So uh, velvet is also the same thing. Velvet and suede, however, the thing about velvet and suede is that they do tend to have a base to them. So if they do wear down, it's more that you're exposing the very flat surface, that thin bare surface that the velvet and the suede adheres to. So with these bags, I won't buy them new. However, I might be, I might consider the buy them pre-loved if they are at a very bargain price less than retail, that sort of thing. I would love to own a Hermes Constance in Doblis, the Dobli, however you say it, and it is essentially suede. It's made of suede. Uh, the next deal breaker is, if it doesn't fit my phone, I am not buying it. I think this is quite like obvious that this should be something that we all kind of consider. However, there are quite a lot of us that are happy to just carry our phones in our hands and that's fine, that's totally fine. But for me, with my lifestyle, with a daughter and a baby, um, you know, impending any moment, really, um, if it doesn't fit my phone, it's impractical because I need to be hands-free. I need to, and I tend to not wear clothes with pockets, or at least I don't make pockets and clothes these days very often. So let's think, for example, you know, the Louis Vuitton mini boy chapeau. Doesn't fit a phone, love it, but it doesn't fit a phone, so I wouldn't buy it. The Jacquemus mini Chiquito bag, I think they've got a couple of versions that don't fit a phone. And then you've got the Chanel round clutch and the Chanel trendy clutch. Neither of those fit a phone, so they might be pretty and they look nice, but when it comes to the price point, if it doesn't fit my phone, 
I ain't gonna buy it. The next deal breaker is overly trendy handbags with lots of logos and non-classic. So when I think about this point, I think about the Fendi Mon Tressa bag. I actually wanted this at some point because there was it was getting flooded on social media. You could see it everywhere on Instagram and that sort of thing. And at one point I was like, oh, it's so cute with the FF logo. But then I'm glad that I didn't buy it. That's kind of, that's like my feeling now when it comes to handbags. I don't like too many logos. There is any exception with Louis Vuitton because it's classic. Um, I feel as though that logo isn't so like, I don't know, it's like, it's, it, I say to me, it's not in your face because it has been around for so, so, so long that it doesn't stand out like a big pow. Whereas like the Fendi FF logo has come and gone in like how it's sort of been displayed on the handbags. It's kind of come and gone. And even the Dior Oblique, again, same thing. It's come, it's gone, and it's come back. So I kind of feel like, yeah, I wouldn't even buy the Dior Oblique saddlebag again, and I did own this before. Now, next one is another deal breaker is PVC handbags. I don't like PVC handbags. I don't mind them if they're non-luxury because then they're cheap, but for an actual luxury brand PVC handbag, like the Chanel one, I wouldn't buy it. It's, that's crazy. It's, it's PVC. PVC is not designed to wear well. It can actually yellow. It can change color and fade and become yucky. Um, repair wise, again, same thing. They don't sell such thing as an edge dressing for PVC. They don't um, sell polish for PVC. Um, I suppose you could probably use patent stuff, but PVC is generally clear. Generally, it's you know transparent in some way or uh, transparent with a color tint. Another deal breaker is shoulder carry only tote. Now, I feel like this needs to be definitely taken with a grain of salt because I feel as though I will most certainly eat my words with this one. But my preference is that if I am to buy a tote bag, I like for it to be versatile in the sense where it can be top handle as well as shoulder carry. So that's something like the On The Go MM. That is kind of more of a tote bag up my alley. Price point, I'm kind of a bit annoyed that it's now had another price increase. But that's that's kind of where I stand when it comes to tote bags. When it's just exclusively a shoulder, shoulder carry tote bag, I mean, I probably shouldn't put this as a deal breaker because I probably would potentially buy one if the price is really reasonable, I can get a good bargain on it, and it's gonna fit the bill of a tote bag. But in a perfect world, if I could buy a tote bag at a price point I'm happy with, I would want it to be handheld, um, to, you know, crook of the arm kind of bag with the option to be a shoulder bag as well. And the next handbag deal breaker is a price point thing. And if a handbag is not Hermes and it sells for over seven and a half thousand dollars Australian, I won't buy it. So that pretty much puts you in Chanel price range category. There are Chanel bags that are over seven and a half thousand and I won't buy them because of that. So I think that would be like, um, the small classic flap, I think it's 7,640 now, I think, if I'm not mistaken. If it comes under, then then you know I probably would consider it. But I'm pretty much at that that, that point where if it's over seven and a half thousand dollars Australian brand new from the store, I'd rather just add more money and get an Hermes bag because I know that I'm far more satisfied with the craftsmanship, far more satisfied with how the overall aesthetic is of the bag, the beauty of it, the art. I just have much more of a passion for Hermes. So the Chanel 19 bag is a bag that I really like and I have considered it, but it comes really close. It, it's over $7,000 Australian, under seven and a half. And I feel like that is definitely what holds me back for that bag is that it just, just gets so close to the Hermes price point of bags that it's like, huh, do I want to spend that on, a, on the Chanel bag? You know, I do. I, 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 it's that struggle. So another deal breaker is red handbags and i'm talking real true red like red lipstick handbags so i used to have a rose japua handbag i'm kind of okay on that rose pinky sort of side with red and i'm also okay with like the red with the like bordeaux brownie very deep rusty kind of tone i do like those kind of reds because i tend to wear especially in in um autumn like fall uh, for winter i wear browns beiges and they're all in that warm kind of rustic side so that's my kind of reds that i do like and i feel like they work do work as neutrals as well but when they're right in that middle that very true true red lipstick red with you know that perfect mixture of that red, um, you know, blue, pinky undertone. So let's think of like Rouge Cassock, Cassac, however you say it, from Hermes Vermilion. That's another real red. Rouge Tomate. 
rouge tomato, tomato you know um, that's more of like that red orangey kind of tone but again it still looks to me like a very true red it's just not the kind of color I feel suits me I don't feel like it works for me it doesn't I don't know I don't feel like it suits my personality either and I think this probably is the last deal breaker that I've got here on my list and um, it's a deal breaker if it doesn't make my heart sing from the get-go like if you're having doubts about it and you're thinking oh yeah I like it it's nice you know but if you're not like as soon as you see it, you're like hearts racing like <gasps> I really want that then it's definitely gonna have to be a deal breaker for me because I started I've, I've learned my lesson with the wrong purchases and you know when I bought something and I've kind of compromised and gone yeah I think I could do that I think I could work with that yeah but I didn't make my heart sing from the get-go that's pretty much a very red flag for me and I, I I think I will still probably get it wrong or my style will change and it'll be a case of yeah my heart sang when I first got it and then things happened with the bag that made me not love it anymore. I feel like looking at bags that are under $2,000 Australian, we can be a little bit more flexible with, you know, giving it a go. But when you're getting high up into those thousands and thousands, you really want to try and get your, get your choices right. And I've decided for me, that's a deal breaker if I'm starting to doubt it. Not that $2,000 isn't a lot. That is definitely a lot of money. But I think that we become, in a sense, um, kind of desensitized to, to luxury prices because nowadays Louis Vuitton is up into like in the $2,000 plus price range, $2,000 plus Australian. So that's why I kind of say like when it's under $2,000 Australian, I might be willing to say go, you know what, I'll give it a go. I think that this will work for me. It's not making my heart pound out of my chest, but I do like it. I'm going to give it a go. That's just to give a little bit more detail into what I'm kind of explaining is a deal breaker for me. So those are all my handbag deal breakers. Like I said, I invite everyone to do this video and thank you very much Isabel for coming up with the video and for collabing with me. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.